from Kashmir to Kanyakumari, India is a spellbinding mosaic of culture, tradition, languages and an extraordinary mingling civilization. Keeping its age-old culture maintained, today the country is taking huge strides on the path of development. Hello, I'm your host Lipakshi and today in our episode of My India, we bring you some of the stories that will give a glimpse of our country's diversity. Let's begin the show by taking you to the Queen of Hills, Shimla, which recently hosted the annual summer festival that celebrates the season of summer in the picturesque hill station in Himachal Pradesh. Organized at the city's famed ridge, the Fiesta is a wonderful showcase of its rich culture and tradition. Have a look. Presenting an amazing blend of culture, heritage, food and glamour, the Shimla Summer Festival 2023 proved to be a gala affair that brought life to the whole city. The festival is celebrated every year since 1960. The festival, through its handicraft exhibitions, fashion shows and live music performances, showcases the local culture, spirit and art of Shimla. This summer festival यहाँ आने वाले टूरिस्टों के लिए और यहाँ के लोगों के लिए बहुत ही आकर्षक क्षण का एक केंद्र बना हुआ है इसके साथ साथ यहाँ पर एनजेडसीसी के माध्यम से पांच स्टेटों के कलाकारों को यहाँ पर बुलाया गया है जिसमें कुछ ऐसे कलाकार हैं जो गलियों में और यहाँ मैदान में बाल रोड पे और इस मैदान पे अलग अलग जगह जो है कुछ बैरूपिया कलाकार है कि पंजाब के नजार पार्टी है राजस्थान के और कलाकार है इसमें कालबेलिया डांस है A fashion show was another extravagant highlight of the festival that drew the attention of people in the hill town. Around 50 students modeled at the show and presented every state's traditional attire with a modern touch. They were happy to get such an opportunity that will provide them an exposure as well as promote Himachali culture. Actually, we have a total 50 students here, and in which 25 are boys and 25 are girls, and we are representing all the states of uh, India. Like we are uh, representing the central zone, like Bihar, West Bengal, Gujarat, Himachal Pradesh, and uh, northeast also, Assam, Sikkim, Meghalaya. Every state is being uh, um, uh, connected in this fashion show. and representing this fashion show is important just because to showcase to everyone present here that we are united we as a indian we have different culture but we are united we are one first of all i would like to thanks uh, summer fest shimla summer festival for giving us this big platform especially us from meghalaya we didn't expect that we could get uh, such this big platform here but i am so grateful that i could get to represent my traditions here uh, in shimla Uh, what I'm wearing is this is called the um, uh, this is called the muka and also the churun and this is our traditional necklace which I'm wearing for the in Meghalaya we have three tribes which is called the pnar the khasi and the garo I am from pnar tribes and I am representing my pnar tribes here sir along with enthralling dance performances food was another enticement that drew the attention of visitors to the festival mouth watering dishes in different stalls made up for a delectable experience for the visitors from savoring local dishes like siddu to tickling their taste buds with street food people had a plethora of options to indulge in हम शिमला घूमने आए हैं हमने यहाँ की बहुत तारीफ सुनी थी यहाँ पे हम आए तो हमें सडनली देखा कि यहाँ पे समर फेस्टिवल चल रहा है जो कि बहुत ही अच्छा चल रहा है यहाँ पे तरह तरह के शोज हो रहे हैं जो कि हम और हमारे बच्चे बहुत एंजॉय कर रहे हैं यहाँ पे फूड फेस्टिवल भी है तरह तरह के खाने हैं और वैसे भी हम बहुत बिग फूड ही और हम बहुत इंजॉय कर रहे हैं और वेदर है वेदर औसम है क्योंकि थोड़ा थोड़ा रेनी है और क्लाउडी है तो इट्स वेदर इज औसम हमने बहुत इंजॉय किया यहाँ पे आगे ऑल वुड Overall the Shimla Summer Festival is a wonderful conglomeration of different art and cultural performances that not just showcase the rich traditions of the state but also promote tourism. 
Well, India has a great history in Sufism that evolved around 1000 years ago. A number of Sufi saints from across the world got settled in India and spread the message of peace and harmony. Today in our episode of My India, we will take you to the shrine of Hazrat Khwaja Bandanawas in Kalburgi city of Karnataka, where the 619th Urz of the Sufi saint was attended by people of various religious communities. Take a look. Decorated with glittering lights and echoing with magic and mysticism, the Darga of Khwaja Banda Nawaz recently commemorated the 619th Urs of the Sufi saint. Situated in the Kalaburgi district of Karnataka, the shrine witnesses a sea of devotees from various backgrounds and religions who visit the shrine for fulfillment of wishes. Devotees from various districts across the state attended the three-day event, thus giving out loud the message of unity and brotherhood. दरगाह के बारे में ये है कि हर मजहब के लोग यहाँ आते हैं हिंदू मुस्लिम कोई भी रहने यहाँ पर सब का एकता है यहाँ पर और यहाँ पर हम लोग हर साल आते बहुत अच्छा लगता है यहाँ पर आने में आज तो संदल मुबारक उनका उठा है अब यहाँ से बंदे नवाज सरकार के इधर आठ से नौ बजे के बीच में चद्दर यहाँ से वहाँ पर पेश की जाएगी a ceremonial procession, also known as Sandal Sharif, was taken out from Badi Masjid in Momeenpura to the Darga premises after the prayer. Commonly known as Banda Nawaz Gaisu Nawaz, the saint was a disciple and then the successor of Sufi saint Nasiruddin Chirag Dehlavi. He is well known among his followers for spreading the message of peace and brotherhood. यहाँ पर जो है हिंदू मुस्लिम एकताई का जो है ना बहुत बड़ा जो है ना एक ये जरिया है आप पूरे जो है ना हिंदुस्तान से हर जो है ना जो है ना स्टेट से कश्मीर से कन्याकुमारी तक सब लोग यहाँ पे हाजिर होते हैं कोई इसमें मजहबी इसमें ये नहीं है हर मजहब के लोग शामिल होते हैं और बहुत बड़े बहुत बड़ा फैजान है हजरत बंदा नवाज रहमतल का जो है ना गुलबरगा शरीफ का पूरे पूरे जो है ना हिंदुस्तान पर बहुत बड़ा फैजान है आपका हजूर गरीब नवाज ख्वाजा These holy celebrations like Urs clearly indicate that the lesson of humanity and compassion that was once propagated by the Sufi saints is still having its roots deeply embedded in the Indian culture. And now a round up of some of the major stories that made news recently. Australian captain Pat Cummins is backing seam bowling all-rounder Cameron Green in the World Test Championship with India. Cummins acknowledged that they would need to carefully manage Green's bowling workload, especially as the all-rounder switches format following his T20 stint in the recent Indian Premier League. For Pat Cummins and company, the WTC final is the first of three major campaigns this year, along with Ashes series against England that immediately follows and the 50 overs World Cup in India in October and November. He is fantastic, Greeny. Um, you know, last test match he played, he scored his first 100. He took a five for, you know, a few test matches before that. He just keeps growing and growing. Um, just a real luxury to have as a captain in the side as well. You know, a fifth bowling option to bowl as many overs as we need really can take wickets. Fast bowler Josh Hazelwood lost his race to be fit for the WTC final, but Australia have a potent replacement in Scott Boland. Green is expected to play a key role, but individually no one will have more at stake than opener David Warner. The 36-year-old is battling to stretch his test career to fulfill his wish of quitting the format after the Sydney test against Pakistan next January. India has dominated both home and away. The recent duels between the test heavyweights who claim the top two spots after a two-year cycle to book their place for the final. India also reached the final of the inaugural WTC in 2021 when New Zealand bested Virat Kohli's side in a rain mart contest in Southampton. Germany's Defence Minister Boris Pistorius met with his Indian counterpart Rajnath Singh in New Delhi to boost bilateral ties between the two nations. 
Pistorius, who is on a four-day visit to India, was greeted by a ceremonial reception with an honor guard in the capital and laid a wreath at the National War Memorial. Bilateral defense cooperation and industrial ties are the topics likely to have dominated discussions at the meeting between the two defense chiefs. Ahead of his visit, Pistorius said that India's reliance on Russian weapons is not a topic that concerns Germany, according to media reports. And moving on, the Sut Mahadev Temple in the Udhampur district of Jammu and Kashmir has always been one of the most pious sites of the Union territory. Every year, a three-day fair is organized at the temple, which is attended by people of different religious communities who visit the shrine for receiving Lord Shiva's blessings. Let's take a look at this year's fair, which gave out loud the message of brotherhood and unity. Take a look. The Jinani Tehsil of Udhampur district in Jammu and Kashmir witnessed a sea of devotees during its Sud Mahadev Fair, which was recently held at the Sud Mahadev Temple in the district. People of various religious communities, be it Hindus, Muslims, Christians or Sikhs, attended the three-day long fair. Breaking all religious barriers, these devotees attended the fair for receiving the blessings of Lord Shiva. I came here from Udhampur. If you get a message of your brother, then you get a message from here. It seems to be a mess here. It seems to be a mess here. People come from three days. People come from the entire Jammu and Kashmir. People come from the entire community. People come from here. They come from the mess here in the Gauri Kund. पाप नाचनी यहाँ पे है वहाँ पे शनान के लिए लोग आते हैं और हर बरक का बंदा यहाँ आता है और कई लोग यहाँ पे बिजनेस करते हैं एक बहुत बड़ा बिजनेस यहाँ पे होता है लोगों का रोजगार बनता है तो आज हम यहाँ पे आए हैं बहुत खुश हैं जब भी ये मेला आता है तो हम लोग बहुत खुश होते हैं यहाँ बहुत ज़्यादा रौनक होती है रश होता है ग्रामीण इलाकों के लोग आते हैं शहरों के लोग आते हैं तीन दिन यहाँ एक उत्सव बना रहता है Devotees took a holy dip in the Bini Sangam, also known as Buddhi Siddhi, Rivule, which flows out from the top of the Dhar Shivgar. Some devotees also bath in the Gauri Kund and offer prayers at Aap Sambhu Temple. This historic temple is situated on the banks of River Devika, which is believed to be the elder sister of Goddess Ganga and is one of the most revered sites in the Union territory. यहाँ पे हिंदू मुस्लिम सिख ईसाई सभी धर्म के लोग यहाँ पे आते हैं माथा टेकते हैं और सुख संपत्ति का कामना करते हैं हम भी यहाँ पे जो पुजारी वर्ग सभी सुबह शाम जब आरती होती है यही माथा प्रार्थना करते हैं कि पूरे ब्रह्मांड में पूरे धरती पर ये माता का आशीर्वाद प्राप्त हो और लोगों की मनोकामनाएं पूर्ण हो इट इज इवेंट्स एंड ओकेजन लाइक दीज दैट शो द ब्यूटी ऑफ यूनिटी इन डाइवर्सिटी दैट प्रिवेल्स इन इंडिया And now we bring you a few short stories about the recent developments and happenings from around the world in our section of World in Focus. Prague's old town was filled with music and dancing as bands and dancers representing Roma communities from across Europe celebrated on the last day of an international festival of their culture and traditions. The week-long Kamoro festival is in its 25th year. Spokesperson Wojtek Slavika said, adding that in the past quarter century, more than half a million people had attended the celebrations. Festival Kamoro má 25. výročí, to znamená funguje čtvrt století. Samozřejmě festival děláme proto, aby jsme propagovali romskou uh, kulturu, nejenom muziku, ale i třeba výtvarné umění a další segmenty kultury. No a samozřejmě těšíme se na další ročníky s tím, že uh, ty předchozí vidělo více než půl milionu lidí. Vystoupilo 263 kapel z 33 zemí světa a ten letošní ročník byl opravdu úspěšný, protože měl velkou návštěvnost, takže jsme spokojení. 
Wearing colorful costumes and playing traditional tunes, participants marched through the Old Town from Vencesla Square to Old Town Square, a magnet for tourists visiting the city. Roma are Europe's largest ethnic minority, with up to 12 million living across the continent, most of them in Central and Eastern Europe, and frequently face discrimination and struggle to access work and education. French President Emmanuel Macron visited the Mont Saint Michael monument in Normandy to mark the Abbey's 1000th anniversary. It was built on a sanctuary dedicated to the Archangel Michael, but it was in the 13th century that work began on the Gothic centerpiece of its architecture, with towering walls and soaring pinnacles. Venir là aussi, c'est être au rendez-vous de notre histoire, de ce qu'elle nous inspire et ce en quoi elle nous oblige et je pense que c'est un avant une, aussi une saison estivale un lieu qui est l'un des plus visités de France qui est au cœur de notre histoire qui nous enseigne cet esprit de, de résistance que nous avons su à chaque fois avoir et de d'élévation c'est ça l'enseignement du Mont Saint-Michel the Mont Saint Michael is one of the most visited French monuments and attracts more than 2 million tourists every year. In summer, thousands of visitors make the crossing on foot, by bicycle or by shuttle bus to reach the historic monument every day. Russian Orthodox Christians in Moscow said they were honored and pleased to have marked Trinity Sunday at the Cathedral of Christ the Savior with one of the country's holiest icons, Andrei Rublev's Trinity. The revered work of art was transferred from Tretyakov Museum last month despite opposition from art historians, fearing that the move could damage it. Для меня троица и произведение искусства необыкновенное Рублев, да, и святое, святая икона, которая прошла через всю жизнь, как говорит, с нашим народом, с нашим государством. Это единение какое-то, я так думаю. President Vladimir Putin's decision to move the Trinity icon underscores his growing reliance on the church for support as the Ukraine war drags on. The Cathedral of Christ the Savior is a vast church that was blown up under Joseph Stalin but was rebuilt in the 1990s after the fall of the Soviet Union. The icon depicts the Oak of Mamre, where the three angels visited Abraham in the book of Genesis. From unprecedented revenue collections and discretionary spending to record surges in exports and foreign direct investment from attaining unparalleled infra development velocity to a sustained decrease in inflation indices, India is now reaping the benefits of a meticulously calibrated decisions in every aspect of the economy. Join us as we discuss how the Modi government navigated the choppy waters in the most skilled and prudent manner and how the Indian economy has reached a stage where it is simply unshakable. What has India done that others haven't in order to reach where it is today? One of the coveted five economies of the world growing at the fastest rate. The most straightforward answer is almost everything. From strategizing long-term economic goals to effectively implementing reforms and measures, and from little tweaks for optimal results to complete overhauling of several frameworks, the brains behind the Indian economy have successfully delivered on both individual aspirations and the nation's progress. If you look at the annual data, annual data, as you rightly said, we have grown at 7.2%. The projection was 6.8 percent. We have again exceeded the projection. That is something very positive. Where are we exceeding? We have done well on exports, but the most important thing that we have done well on is on the gross fixed capital formation. From bringing mom and pop stores under the purview of the government, in line with successful efforts towards formalization of the economy, 
The Modi government took off with an aim to ensure the tax base of the country was widened and the people at the lower economic ladder received enough opportunities for upward financial movement. The formalization of the Indian economy ensured incentives, social security benefits, easy access to credit and financial services to those who complied, and a complete makeover of the business environment of the country. In this report, Morgan Stanley have highlighted certain very important factors such as supply-side policy reforms in relation to corporate taxes, which have in India come to a level of about 26%. Real estate significant changes have taken place. Digitalization of the economy has occurred on a very large scale. Having navigated the initial phase of hardship where low-income business entities were affected, the long-term impact of government endeavors have started to bear fruit with nearly all businesses across the country contributing to the country's financial system. And while the smaller businesses were tracked and taxed for the larger good of the country, India ensured her big businesses continued to flourish and came up with mechanisms that enabled a fearless business environment. So there are many good changes for Indian economy like RERA, bankruptcy court, supply side reforms, then uh, good MNC culture, focus on FDI, then of course uh, corporate profits. Businesses were deregulated and excessive bureaucratic measures and red tape were dealt a heavy blow. India has also done away with retrospective tax laws. India has cultivated a favorable environment for investors. India received a record 84.8 billion USD in foreign direct investment, including 7.1 billion in foreign direct investment equity inflows in the fiscal year of 2022. India is also making great efforts to accelerate infrastructure development. From airways to railways and roadways, a swift expansion and upgradation are set to enhance the macroeconomic dividends of the country. This makeover is also projected to significantly reduce India's logistics expenditure from around 16% to 10-12% to in the coming years. India's digitalization endeavors have also gained global recognition, with an increasing number of countries seeking to emulate her transaction model. The digitalization effort has extended services and incentives to even the most remote individuals and entities. The government's visionary ideas and effective implementation have cumulatively positioned India on the path to achieving remarkable growth. Some of the results are already available for everybody to see. India's per capita income has witnessed a tremendous spike recently and is projected to grow to about 5,200 USD by 2032. The other thing about the Morgan Stanley report that I found really interesting was that the per capita income of an average Indian will rise 2.36 times, nearly two and a half times in the next eight years. Morgan Stanley estimates the inflation in the country will remain benign and less volatile, which would pave an obstruction-free growth passage for the country. India's consumption basket is also increasing, and the country is fast moving towards discretionary spending. This, we believe, is an outcome of uh, structural reforms, uh, of supportive policies, and uh, of course, good governance, uh, which has led to uh, India occupying its rightful place at the high table of global economies. The Indian approach has sparked a fresh sense of optimism among multinational corporations, which are looking towards the Indian market with great enthusiasm. From Apple Inc. to Google, major corporations across sectors are expanding their footprints in India. Some say India is likely to become the most attractive investment destination around the world in the near future. The country has already registered a significant leap in global rankings in terms of ease of doing business. The Indian market is thriving with a renewed vitality and the government is ensuring a sustained period of such economic growth, preventing any form of slowdown.
Well, that's all we have for you this week. Your comments and suggestions are important to us. Do give us your feedback at myindia.anin.com. I'm your host, Lipakshi, and it's goodbye from the entire production team.